so I'll be talking a little bit about uh, some of the work we did in collaboration with a lot of partners. Um, and, um, and I'll mention them by name, but uh, one of the major partners was UNICEF and then some colleagues with WHO also uh, collaborated on this work. Uh, how do I uh, I'll use this? Okay. So this was a working model uh, that a couple of us came up with. Um, nothing fancy, but it says that often as we look at things, uh, we look at in terms of cause and effect, but that's not always clear. Uh, but we are, are, the way we process this information and the, the way we act uh, can be conceived as a layer of, uh, of overlapping phenomena. Uh, so on the surface, we often have thoughts and feelings. We measure those. And then underlying are often attitudes and cognitive beliefs. Uh, trust and social norms are even more um, immutable, if you will. Uh, and that includes experiences and fears, but underlying a lot of this, and I borrow from the moral foundations theory in this case, uh, are our values. Um, and a lot of it is, um, is built upon the values we bring to the table. Social media is, um, and digital media more broadly, is increasingly pervasive in our lives. Uh, our existences and, and our perception of reality um, is increasingly shaped by uh, what we experience online. And it's not just the, you know, it's not just uh, Twitter or um, Facebook or uh, even TikTok and Reels. It's also Amazon's comment section. Uh, it's also what happens, and we did an evaluation of uh, the comment sections of newspapers on vaccine articles, and we saw it, uh, we found that there was a lot of um, conversation was driven by how people perceive what other people say uh, around some of the stories around vaccines. Digital media is not the whole reality, so keeping in mind, and especially in low and middle income countries, um, there is, uh, you know, it, it is... Any interventions should be part of a comprehensive strategy that includes community engagement, that includes healthcare provider uh, training in, in that com level of interpersonal communications. But it can, uh, but uh, doesn't always um, influence attitudes and, and, in fact, behavior as well. So a few examples. So we um, have been engaged in these uh, routine immunization and COVID campaigns. Um, and with collaborators um, at Vaccine uh, Acceptance Intervention Lab and UNICEF Vaccine Demand Observatory. Um, so, so we've had existing partnership with various partners, um, with UNICEF and Meta. Um, in fact, we started when they were called Facebook, then became Meta. Um, we worked on both on um, routine immunization um, uh, and um, and some pilots of COVID-19 and then COVID-19 and then uh, uh, back to routine immunization. And so, so there's a series of interventions we did um, and campaigns were co-created co with uh, UNICEF headquarters, um, UNICEF country offices. Um, it's a lot of fun to work with country offices. Um, and, you know, they often are embedded and uh, have col close collaborations with the ministries of health um, and, and public good project and, and other partners. Um, and so, so therefore, and, and then uh, WHO colleagues, some of the WHO colleagues also participated in, in this work. So uh, one way of working on this medium is to just basically do, uh, start with brand lift studies, which is a, a established approach in digital advertising. And that borrows from you know, good old randomized controlled trials. Uh, but essentially, that's a version of it online where uh, you select a group, uh, you select interventions, and you do so-called A-B testing, and uh, you measure impact around attitudes and antecedents uh, uh, of, uh, of behavior. Because of legal reason, in a lot of these situations, you cannot measure whether you'll take the vaccine because that becomes a you know health information and a lot of um, sort of lawyers of a lot of these companies get nervous 
about this. So, so you, we do measure proxies. We do other studies to say like what questions are actually predictive of behavior. Um, I like definite outcomes uh, like actual vaccine uptake, uh, like measuring prevention of mortality. I don't like mortality. Uh, that's the whole reason I'm in public health. Uh, but, uh, you know, but from a technical perspective, that's a more concrete outcome. But in this case, we have to look at uh, other proxies. So, for example, using a brand lift is a study, and but we also did methodological contributions to conventional brand lift studies. The fact that we were working with Meta itself in a lot of these, so it was uh, a, a learning for not just us, but for them as well. And we grounded these uh, campaigns in behavioral science. Um, uh, you know, because uh, these approaches shouldn't be hunch-based approaches, they should be evidence-informed at least. Uh, and so, so highest, what we did was we ran a series of uh, campaigns and we ran a series of ads and we took advantage of the sandbox we had, which was, you know, we could have adequate power in a lot of these tests. Um, and we tested and tested and tested. So we, uh, you know, uh, identified highest performing campaigns in terms of the brand lift survey, uh, then highest performing uh, ads based on Facebook ad metrics. Um, and then, uh, you know, in terms of clicks, in terms of cost per uh, conversion and all of these metrics. And then uh, a, a, a results-based contest-driven messaging strategy, which was optimized for impact in various countries. So that was our usual way of, uh, of managing these campaigns. So we have worked in um, approximately 13 countries. Uh, we have worked in actually a few other countries as well, but these are sort of large-scale campaigns. Some around routine immunizations, others around COVID-19. We worked through the pandemic. We have been working post-pandemic as well. So I'm not going to, so there's a lot of data and I'm not going to go into the details of all every nitty gritty of this because we don't have time. Uh, uh, but some big picture, very big picture lessons, because we have data from every single, not just every single campaign, but how each ad performed. And there are some lessons uh, that uh, are, are, are available. Um, first of all, um, you know, you can use insights uh, to, to change because what you do is you, you uh, select these ads, you select these campaigns, again, grounded on, on data. So our process started with literature search and the fact that what could work, for example, if uh, are you, uh, is a disease based on the social listening, based on what we are hearing from countries, from uh, country offices, UNICEF country offices, as well as uh, ministries of health and other data sources, should we rely on disease salience? Should we rely on national pride, for example, in India for vaccines? And so, so but these were testable hypotheses. So we did that and then use these insights to identify these. Um, and so if you see, there's a subtle variation. I know, I'm sure you don't understand all of these languages. Uh, if you do, I'll offer you a job on the spot uh, because we do need people who actually think in multiple languages. Um, um, and, and actually, that has helped us. Uh, people, bilingual, trilingual people were part of our team. And, uh, and that actually helped us in, to find some subtleties um, in, uh, in our messaging. Uh, so, so there were very, uh, you know, uh, variations of, of messaging. For example, love is protection in Kenya was different than how we, uh, how that message uh, is uh, applied and operationalized in India. Both of these were best based on initial insights and then extensive A-B testing, including whether it was pictures versus graphics, uh, versus illustrations in terms of the nature of creatives, you know, who the character was, what the message was, what the copy was with this message. Uh, and so this is, you know, we, we did, this is one example sort of, uh, for partial example of multiple uh, uh, iterations, uh, rounds of iterations. Uh, and I, could t I can tell you, uh, you know, the big message for this is that we could do it at scale. And this is just a fraction of what we did. Um, and we had pretty reasonable cost per reach and cost per click. And again, if you contextualize it in the context of uh, vaccine, um, you know, acceptance campaigns that are community-based. And if it's not the, um, uh, you know, the sole intervention, it can be a nice compliment where you go in with 
um, something, do a one-two punch of this overarching digital campaigns plus direct community engagement in areas where it is needed. Because if you evaluate the cost of, uh, of doing community-based campaigns, it's a national campaign for most countries, even in the context of health system support uh, resources, uh, for example, for a new vaccine introduction, et cetera, are almost cost prohibitive. They may be cost effective, but countries don't have both neither the resources to go out in every community uh, and do these campaigns. That's the reality. So we are cost uh, per click, and then in certain cases, we separately cost. Uh, so our, our even cost per additional vaccination was very favorable. It, it, it was, you know, in few cents, depending on the countries. So we had at the, you know, this experience includes 4 billion impressions had significant reach. So average reach per test was 76 million um, and with ranging from 18 million to 226 million users in country that led to 11.8 uh, million clicks. And so this is, again, a, you know, you go, you do a blitzkrieg and then you have uh, it's, it's a game of not just proportions and percentages, but also the actual numerators. Um, and and the, the clicks were usually to vaccine scheduling. Uh, and for some countries, we had data, and we, which was very um, uh, favorable conversion rates based on compared to digital advertising, and that was confirmed by our meta colleague uh, colleagues, um, and um, based on what they see for other commercial entities. But also, um, we intentionally chose action-oriented clicks. Uh, but we, all, because of restrictions on accessing individual health data, we often could not access it directly, but we had proportions, et cetera. Um, we have had almost universally relatively high recall of ads compared to other benchmarks. We saw positive shifts. Not everyone who saw the ad uh, had positive shifts in uh, attitudes and it was reasonably cost effective. So for example, one thing uh, we found was that regional target, we, we look, we tested the hypothesis, can we have uh, a universal set of messages that you know, uh, UNICEF New York or WHO HQ could, could just deploy? Um, you know, it would, would be very cost efficient and very um, um, effective in terms of uh, rolling it out just through translation, and we found that, of course, it didn't work. Um, but we also found that in large countries, there was were, it was worth doing regional campaigns. Uh, and so there is that, uh, that even within countries, there is variability. Um, uh, for example, in northern Nigeria, ads that fe featured parents with children performed best in clicks, reach, and impressions. In southern Nigeria, Healthcare workers and families, and those of you who have worked in Nigeria can, can you know, can relate to the fact that the, there is a, a difference in uh, how public conversations happen in both of those regions. Another thing uh, that um, reels content, uh, and we were doing reels, uh, you know, uh, and we started doing reels with the rise of TikTok. We didn't have access to TikTok. But we saw that TikTok was taking over a lot of the narratives uh, that were um, that were happening. Reel was a, a close proxy, so we did some experiments on reels, um, and you can do that. Initially, when we tried on Facebook, video didn't was not advantageous. So very initially, at the very beginning of our pilot, even during our pilot phase. Video wasn't advantageous, but very quickly with the advent of TikTok and Reels, we started seeing um, uh, possibility of, of message. This is an organic message. And I think these were kids of UNICEF country office colleagues. And, and one of my favorite bands, Soundtrack. Um, so, and then uh, uh, who was there also mattered, who featured in these. And in fact, we had access to more better produced videos, but often organic looking videos had a better lift. Uh, in this case, uh, what we found was that um, uh, it, actually Reels content, irrespective of who was featured, uh, helped move people. 
Uh, and these are absolute percentage points per campaign uh, shift. And so in terms of a single campaign, there's a pretty decent shift um, around different metrics. Uh, metrics. We believe, based on other work, that importance of vaccines is more closely associated with actual behavior. And as I told you, we couldn't measure actual behavior because of um, legal reasons uh, and, and Meta getting nervous uh, if we started getting too close to actually asking whether you get vaccinated or not. Um, and uh, influencers and father focused campaigns in this context works. And this is an example. Uh, and we had variations. Sometimes mother focused campaigns worked. Uh, one of the things we found was uh, irrespective of uh, Underlying values, values-based messaging had a uh, had a more of an impact. So, if your values were um, emphasis on liberty, if your messaging was aligned for liberty, uh, it was more effective. If your values were more purity-focused, purity-focused messaging, and so it varied across what the specific value was. But if you had uh, values-based messaging that was you know worked across populations. That was the only thing that worked. For example, um, gender sh shifted uh, you know targeted messages based on gender shifted specific audiences. For example, important to get both mothers and uh, fathers with tailored content for uh, routine immunization demand. So this is father-focused campaign in Argentina and female-focused mother-focused campaign in in Pakistan. Again, and it was female focused beyond mothers uh, because often it's um, paternal grandmothers who are influential in these, uh, you know, mothers-in-law uh, are um, influential in a lot of these decisions, but not always. So, so, so accounting for gender, being able to test it, be, being able to improve it uh, was helpful. Uh, and, and so therefore, you know, if looking at vaccine importance, again, we, we measured it. Um, in, in Argentina, so Buenos Aires was a target region, and then other non-Buenos Aires uh, priority provinces was the other target. In, uh, you know, in terms of um, father-focused campaigns, for example, self-efficacy was improved in Buenos Aires, uh, but vaccine importance uh, was uh, improved in, um, in prioritized uh, uh, provinces and not vice versa. And again, this is nuanced. Not everything works everywhere. And we believe uh, in reporting um, what we didn't find um, to be effective. Uh, because a lot of these messages are, you know, their perceptions. And I think, um, you know, this morning, uh, you know, we assume things are going to work and, and they don't always work. But to uh, repeat a Silicon Valley cliche, this medium uh, um, helps you fail fast and then improve and then go back uh, with a new uh, strategy that eventually works in a lot of these situations. And then, for example, um, uh, female-focused campaigns lifted RI outcomes amongst uh, women in hard-to-reach areas, um, and, and that had uh, different dynamics to it. So for digital messaging campaigns uh, to drive this time routine immunization uptakes, eight countries prioritized for routine immunization demand activities. We designed 28 campaigns and tested with uh, more than 100 ads, uh, uh, you know, ads credit driven uh, to, uh, uh, to run tests from UNICEF, country offices and partners, tens of millions of Facebook users reach with strategic campaign content. Another example of how we formulated these messages, we did some early work. Uh, well, it sounds early, but it was, I think, came out in 2018. So it was uh, 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 2017. Uh, uh, yeah. It's all a blur. It's two eras, pre-pandemic, post-pandemic. Uh, so uh, we uh, wanted to test our vaccines decisions, values-based decisions. Those of you who are familiar with the moral foundations theory, we hypothesized uh, that actually some vaccine decisions at least are. And we found that... and. Uh, that if you emphasized authority, irrespective of vaccine-related authority, if your underlying values are uh, emphasis on authority uh, or submission to authority, you were less hesitant about vaccines, in this case, HPV vaccine. If you emphasized purity, that could be religious purity or things like, my body is a temple, I don't want toxins in my body. Um, uh, and we tested that, uh, where... 
more likely uh, to be uh, vaccine hesitant. Same with liberty. Again, I believe it's not our place to change people's values, uh, but it is entirely appropriate and desirable to speak to people's values. So we did a series of studies and that came out in social science medicine now, uh, non-digital media uh, based messaging, but that's a, a separate conversation. We of course uh, showed uh, an increase um, in, in coverage, uh, et cetera, uh, increase in acceptance. This is an example on what we did. Uh, we did digital media based, uh, you know, did an online survey and then deployed it in digital media just to show you a little bit of our process. We did a, uh, an online survey experiment where we said, what if we do purity violations, uh, which is overlaps with disgust sensitivity. And this is a pilot study. We wouldn't, uh, at, at scale, we want and we, we don't use this specific language, but it was to elicit a phenomenon in a limited group of people, we said, uh, you know, a UNICEF post encouraging parents to uh, to vaccinate, to keep kids free from disgusting diseases like polio and measles, especially with polio, it has a potential of stigmatizing. So you, we won't use this uh, in, in a mass campaign, but it was to illustrate. And so when you get that, you deploy a milder version uh, of it, uh, but, but we wanted to illustrate. And so this was, um, you know, uh, the actual version of it. And we found that if you had... Um, high uh, vaccine uh, trust index score at the at baseline you had a uh, you know you had an impact mm -hmm. um and so the intervention group you improve these scores um based on um what your underlying values were what your underlying score was so the what that did was that helped us targeting and it was actually the other way around if you were not um uh, at that baseline so it, what it did was these kinds of things help us uh target these things based on other proxies to people who were particularly not gung-ho about vaccines. And so the, there was a lot of learnings. Uh, and uh, based on a lot of these learnings, we wanted to translate that into actual trainings. And there was a lot of demand from ministries of health. Uh, and it turns out Meta's own staff and, and some folks at WHA and, and, and UNICEF country offices specifically uh, on actually synthesizing not just, but all, all of this information, a lot of this information into a course. So we developed uh, a course uh, called Digital Media for Health Outcomes, uh, again, um, uh, with various partners. Um, and, and it was you know, evidence-based, evidence-informed. Uh, we initially did a, um, a, 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 a restricted course, which wasn't publicly available, mainly focusing on ministries of health, international agencies, uh, uh, as well as some uh, uh, large uh, multi-country NGOs. And, and this, we intentionally uh, convened a consortium of partners. UNICEF was one of the major partners, but others included the Ad Council in the US, which is the nonprofit arm of the advertising agency, uh, um, industry in the US, the Africa Union and Africa CDC, Meta itself, PSI, uh, in my current school, UT Southwestern. Uh, I was at Yale at that time. Uh, and then and, and WHO, uh, especially uh, towards the end, played a pretty helpful role uh, in establishing this course and teaching this course. We had, it's a five module course. It intentionally starts with theory and the rest is very practical. And we intentionally ground it in theory uh, and say that, uh, again, you start with behavioral insights um, uh, and uh, we contextualize it and then we uh, talk about crafting, actually developing your community comm strategy, designing for context and so creatives go into the details of creatives, um, uh, then campaign implementation. And a lot of people, for example, partners like Ad Council come and you know, they have sessions and lectures associated with this and then impact evaluation. So it, as of now, it has been uh, translated in, uh, actually translated in eight languages because originally it was in English. Uh, so total available in nine languages. And it's always funny to see sort of my photo with, uh, with other stuff. Uh, I don't know why, but I've, I kind of find it funny. Um, um, and then, so we've had in the public cohort, we had really good response in the restricted cohort. And in this public cohort, so there are a lot of reviews, and this is a sample. We got only one 4.5 review. Uh, it's obviously a selected sample, people who are either angry or not. The others are fives. Uh, I wish they, 
I got that before my tenure package went in uh, several years ago. Uh, and uh, so either they are the nicest student or uh, this is serving uh, utility. And so we are uh, doing this. It's available if, if any of you or your partners are interested. Um, you can join it in Coursera. Um, uh, there's a Facebook group, group uh, and, and there's a WhatsApp group, and some of these tools were mentioned throughout the pandemic We with partners like uh, UNICEF and Facebook, uh, PGP, First Draft, uh, etc. We have created, uh, we created this uh, Vaccine Misinformation Management Guide, which has been translated into five other languages, correct? Uh, that's total is six or total is five? Yeah, we've had like downloads uh, of this. And then we created the vaccine messaging guide specifically for digital media that has been improved. Right now it's in version two and then I vaccinate book that goes beyond digital media uh, is a synthesis of evidence. There's a lot of people, some familiar faces, uh, some uh, not so familiar faces that went into uh, developing this work uh, and coordinating this work, including the course. So I'll pause here. <laughs>